Hey guys, I'm just going to do a quick deck profile from the Crystal Beast deck that I played today. Got third place, had a draw with Ritual Beast and a loss to Snake Eye, both in time and both in game threes that I definitely could have won. <laughs> the Ritual Beast deck, we had a draw in game three for a draw in the match. The Snake Eye deck won in time versus me. Uh, I had to crash an Azarune into his Flame Bridge Dragon to make a thrust live in main phase two but i played against memento i played against the first place deck was a tenpai dragon link deck and i also played against ice barrier and ninja and i don't think i remember another matchup but anyway uh most games went reasonably similar but the deck i'm going to show today the goal of it is to not play too similarly if it can be helped so uh, shout out to the org and all of their patience with me all the time. I'm going to quickly go through the deck and then maybe do like a combo line. We'll see. Uh, so starts off, there are three Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus. When you summon it, it puts one in the back row. If you hear me say scale, I just mean like when I say scaling from the deck or something, it just means placing into the back row. Uh, we have one of the Topaz Tiger. It was a Cobalt Eagle, but it does actually matter to have different attributes, and one of the Carbuncle, which is new from the tin in Quarter Century Secret Rare. It's not a new card by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, rounding out the Crystal Beast monsters, we have two of the Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon and one of the not Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon, the ultimate Crystal Rainbow Dragon. Uh, for the second engine in the deck, we have the Millennium Guys. I don't play the shield. It's extremely unnecessary. This is more than enough to get you there. And this guy gets to this, gets to the spell for a free card. Or the spell gets to him, gets to him. Or he gets to the spell, gets to him. So you always have a closed loop. Uh, theoretically, some of those plays do get you to the shield as well, but it's not necessary. And this deck is already 60 cards. Uh, the next engine is this, because you can search for it with the rank 4 or with the bonfire, and then this, which is searched off of that. And the one engraver, this is the only Fiendsmith card in the main deck. There is no need for anything else, because you always just pull it out of your deck with Requiem, and you always make Requiem with Moon. The uh, Snake Eye engine, so the one Ash, the one Oak, the one Poplar, the one Diabell Star, and the one Flame Burge Dragon, because they're all still legal. And lastly, a single copy of Diabell Star the Black Witch to more consistently see those options. For the spells, we had three Golden Rule. This card plays pretty similarly to Soul Charge from the deck. It's actually just insane what you get away with with this card. And three copies of Crystal Bond, which is probably second only to Rika as far as Rotas for decks go. Um, the the Rika one obviously is the best one, but this is a pretty ridiculous card. And three Rainbow Bridge of the Heart. This is a starter. This is an extender. This is an interrupt. This card is the reason this deck is viable at all in this format. And then lastly, one Awakening of the Crystal Beasts, which is how you search for the Rainbow Bridge of the Heart. And three copies of Rainbow Bridge, which search for Golden Rule, Crystal Bond, Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates to get to Rainbow Bridge of the Heart. This thing isn't even once per turn. This card is wild. For Snake Eye spells, obviously, three Bonfire gets to the Nemesis, gets to the Ash, the Poplar. Uh, the one of Original Sin, with three copies of Wanted for Diabell Star slash Poplar, and this for Poplar to get the Divine Temple of the Snake Eye. The best card in the deck, and it's not close, three copies of Foolish Burial Goods. It's almost impossible to lose a duel opening this card. And the one of Wedgu Temple, as well as Shinra Bansho and Konig Vissen. Koenig I, I don't speak German. Uh, and then a terraforming as well. And a rainbow bridge of salvation 
to round out the ability to get to all of your ridiculous field spells. I'll talk more about these in a second. Uh, we also had just some nice non-engine in the main deck, so two Droplet, two Dark Ruler No More, playset of Triple Tactics Talent, a tri and Thrust, playsets of both Talent and Thrust in our 60 card deck, the best trap in the game, Angel Statue Azarun, and a single copy of Infinite and Permanence, so that Thrust has something to set going first, mostly. Uh, and then it's like an uncalled viable hand trap. It's just the best of the effete bad hand traps. Uh, for these two cards, everyone I played today had to read them. These are super underrated. They've been legal for quite a while and no one's really been using them. Um, although I, I will say that they're uh, extra good in this deck, but they've been very good in Snake Eye the entire time and just not really used. This one activates this card from the deck to the opponent's side of the field, and this one will activate this one from the deck to the opponent's side of the field. So either one gets the other. And then the turn player, which would be you or your opponent if you end, can use both effects. Uh, it's been a very long time since field spells have worked that way, but the difference between a field spell and a continuous spell is that both players can use them. It's just been that since like 2013, every field spell has just said, the turn player can, like only I get to, like you play the Divine Temple of Snake Eye and it places a thing from the deck, which is crazy that field spells have been doing that lately. But the summoning from the back row thing, it says that like you can do it, even though historically field spells are supposed to affect both. And that's why like playing one would pop the other person's because we were supposed to share one field spell zone effectively, kind of like at the extra monster zone. This was the extra spell and trap zone, if that makes sense. Um, these still do work that way. Uh, other than that, the only things you really need to know are like what they let you do. So this one here says bring up from the back row, and this one here says shove someone into the back row. And if there's a spell or trap in the way, it also gets destroyed. And the way you can do the shove is by having a monster across from their monster. And something you do have to be careful of is if you start on this one and give them this, they can use it against you if you end your turn controlling a field spell. By playing a monster in front of your guy, they can shove your guy. So you got to be mindful of that. Make sure that if you do start on this one instead of this one, that you clear your field spell using a snake eye effect or forbidden droplet, like something just to get it off the field. Um, but ultimately, like this will let you, like if uh, Poplar has put something in the back row, this will let you just summon it. Uh, similar with like Sapphire Pegasus, put something in the back row, this lets you just summon it. And when you've played this and give them this one is the ideal situation, like you terraforming for this card. Uh, you giving them this still lets you use theirs to get your free summon, and then you get this off the board and they can never use it to punish you. They still control this card the whole turn. And this is the part that I feel like most people have just kind of overlooked for the last couple of years that these have been around, is that your opponent, like we, we play Called by the Grave to deal with like Ash, Valor, and maybe Mourner, right? I, I guess arguably Droll, but we don't have Max C in the TCG. Uh, this is like called by for the other stuff that you can't use called by on all the spells and traps. Like they can't use Imperm, they can't use Evenly Matched, they can't use Lightning Storm, like all the actual like back row they can't play. And that's pretty significant when like the end boards of decks, especially before where like, Appaloosa, like only monster negates, so you were always worried about things like evenly. Uh, you're still gonna obviously worry about um, Harvey Strata Duster, Regeki, like every deck's gonna worry about that, but you uh, you do what you can, obviously, to hold on. But in lieu of like those pretty bad hand traps, I'm just playing like droplets, Dark Ruler No More. I don't want to like discard a Veiler and watch my opponent continue to play, and these stop them from using the more dangerous of the board breakers. So, uh, I guess I'll do the extra deck real quick before I worry about, like, maybe some kind of combo. Uh, I, I play a Nightmare Phoenix and a Hida, mostly because I need a fire to turn Prom Princess into, so it can go in the graveyard. Prom Princess in the graveyard is quite powerful. And then this thing, which is just a nice way to have something for Prom Princess to pop, and it just gives, like, an active threat. I don't play Zelantis, don't have room for it. Um, you play this... The Infernal Flame Banshee, when it's banished, if you control a Pyro, it special summons itself, and it's two level fours detached to search for a Pyro monster, so it can get you to 
the Snake Eye engine, it can get you, it's just bonfire. Gets you to the Nemesis flag and stuff. We play the IP and the SP, of course. Um, believe it or not, this is the most rarely used engine. Protos calls dark in a vacuum. Uh, sometimes also will call fire, at which point um, you're still not able to like use Flame Burge to pull this up anyway. But a lot of the time, these are more like going second cards. Uh, you, you can end on this, and depending on how often you get hand trapped, like that, that threat's there. But this is actually used more often, like turning like the bunny into it or something. And of course, we do play probably the best card in the game, the Stillo Hat Rabbit. This thing is just incredible. It won me more duels today than any other card by a mile. The Anima, so you have a Link 1 to make, mostly. And then... The centerpiece of the deck, Saryuja of Skulldred, this is the card that you're always trying to make. Um, you even make this before you go into anything that would stop Nibiru, because even if they nib this, you still draw four. Uh, this, like, baits out things like Ash Blossoms and so on, and then it still has the special summon from hand effect. Like, th this card, again, just dramatically raises your win rate, puts back all your bricks. Pretty crazy card. Uh, play both of the moons. Did get to use this to summon this. It's really, really good when you do. Um, this is obviously a catalyst into this card, but when you're doing that combo, um, just put the goddess away. When you go into this and then summon this, and then this goes into Engraver, uh, Engraver equips Requiem, and the two of them send to Graveyard for Necroquip Princess, and you actually put the closed heaven back into your extra deck to revive the engraver and overlay for this guy because that's how like you're beating Nibiru this format as well as this is just two special summon effect negates which is pretty great and then the requiem is still in there if you detach engraver the next turn you can bring engraver back and continue to pose threats but that puts the moon back in to keep that like double board clear threat alive uh, so I don't want to have to edit this video. Uh, normally I would like pile out the deck and fairly like shuffle for a hand, but uh, I'm, I'm just gonna shuffle this incredibly sorted deck and probably brick. And if I do, I'll just like find like a hand of all three ofs or something because it's the hand you're most likely to draw and kind of go from there. I'll just try and like play out something silly, see what we can get away with. Uh, you're supposed to do 12 shuffles to like actually randomize the deck, but these are not perfect shuffles by any stretch of the imagination. It's probably fine. One, two, three, four, five. And we have Flame Burge and Topaz, a double brick hand. The third is the Rainbow Dragon. Double brick hands are never great. Don't love what I'm looking at here. We do have Diabell Star. We do have Rainbow Bridge of the Heart. We do have a Crystal Beast Monster, so... We could cook a little bit. There's a little bit of cooking to be had. Got my phone blowing up on me. So you can start with Rainbow Bridge of the Heart. It gives you an extra normal summon of a Crystal Beast Monster, or you can pop a Crystal Beast Monster. So you can like extra normal summon it, and then pop a Crystal Beast in your hand, or that you control. Search your deck for a Crystal Spell, add it to your hand, so you can get to the Bond. And when this is destroyed, it puts itself in the back row, and now it's there to send for Diabell Star. And then we can activate Bond. Bond places a Crystal Beast monster from the deck into the back row to add one to hand. So let's get Pegasus, I suppose. Uh, I could just get Golden Rule instead of Crystal Bond, huh? Nah, I'll just stick with what I was doing. Trust my instincts. Uh, shook, 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 shook. Broken card. And then we still haven't actually regular normal summoned yet, but let's go into Diabell Star the Black Witch. Send the Topaz Tiger. This is in our hand. And Diabell Star. This is one of the problems with the deck is that you play so many one ofs, and the deck is so big that it takes a long time to find everything, so you have to be careful not to go into time. But shoot, 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 shoot. Get this. And then this guy banishes himself. Searches your deck for Rainbow Dragon. Pretty cool. It's how Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates is able to resolve. And also special summons a negated Crystal Beast monster from your deck. This is set. Can then use our normal summon on a Pegasus. 
and the Pegasus will bot a back row a, another Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon, and then can make two level fours for the Banshee, and detach, and go and get Nemesis Flag, and then Nemesis Flag puts back a banished card to special summon itself, and then that's going to search for Arc Nemesis Protos. I just realized I'm doing this combo upside down. I apologize, but hopefully it's follow enoughable, follow alongable enough. <laughs> Whatever turn of phrase you wish to use. Uh, probably want to just go into Sari Yuju from here, but let's uh, flip this up, send this card, and that's gonna get me to Snake Eye Ash, which will get me to Poplar. One, two, three, four, five. Poplar gets me to the field spell. Field spell puts Snake Idea Bell Star. I believe I saw it near the end. Yeah, into the back row. This goes to the graveyard. And you're just kind of cooking from here, but I obviously I want to put this Flame Bridge and this Azurine back in my deck. So you can go one, uh, two, and three, and probably Poplar. Yeah, we'll use Poplar. There's four for Seriuja, so that you can chain link one Seriuja, chain link two Poplar. And it doesn't really matter what Poplar picks, just a card for a Snake Eye to send momentarily. But then Seriuja will draw four. I was just looking through the deck, so obviously should shuffle it, but you draw four and you gotta put back three from your entire hand. Uh, and I have access to Awaken in the Crystal Ultimate, so I'll hold on to that Rainbow Dragon. We will put back the Azurin, we will put back the Flame Burge, and we already have access to all of the Snake Eye stuff, so we'll put back this Bonfire while we're in there as well. And those all go on the bottom of the deck. And we can Foolish Burial Goods for Rainbow Bridge of Salvation, and banish Rainbow Bridge of Salvation to search our deck for a Field Spell. Let's get the Koenig Vissen, as well as a Crystal Beast monster. Uh, let's get Ruby Carbuncle. And I'm probably going to run out of zones in a hurry here, but we'll see. Uh, we will send this and Ash. Get to Oak. Oak will revive Ash. Oak and Flag. So we'll get to Flame Burge Dragon. I hear it's a pretty good Yu-Gi-Oh card. I'll put that there for now. Flame Burge Dragon. And I can put it in attack mode because I can't get Lightning Stormed anyway. And then I'll activate Koenig Vissen. Give them Shinra Bancho. And then I can use Shinra Bancho to summon this. And this can summon itself. And now you just, like, again, you have four bodies, as if nothing even changed. Uh, from here, I've already used Topaz Tiger, and I've only got one of those left in the deck, and a Pegasus is left in deck. Yes, I do have a Pegasus left in deck still. So, Rainbow Bridge could get Golden Rule here, but... I will get Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates, activate Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates, add a Rainbow Bridge card, pl place it down. Uh, so many resources. At this point, you just kind of start going into the things you want to make. So, like, these two bodies would be the Moon Engine into the uh, Wave King High Caesar. These ones go into the bunny to get to the Azarune, and then you get two more bodies, and those two bodies and Seriuja can be Prom Princess to revive Flame Burge. Uh, all this to say, you still special summon Arc Nemesis Protos, because you have a wind and a fire and an earth in your graveyard. And then Protos can call any attribute in the game at this point. I called wind by popping a Pegasus against the Ritual Beast player, I popped the Wave King High Caesar Water against the Ice Barrier player. 
uh, absolute worst case scenario, um, like you still have this is two more bodies. And instead of going into this, you can get golden rule and golden rule can place two crystal beasts into your back row to revive Pegasus to get to a wind. And then Sarah Yuja can special this Carwunkle from hand who will bring up those two crystal beasts for even more bodies to get you through things like your IP line or just going into like this thing with the prom princess in the graveyard. And it's just going to depend on like the matchup and what you think you're going to call with Protos. But that's the gist of the deck. It just kind of throws cards at them pretty much nonstop. Uh, I got to a point where I was against the Tenpai player and I ended on the High Caesar and the Bunny with the Azurun set and passed. And he went in the end of your, end fa end of your main phase, Nibiru, and I used Caesar and he went Valor and left me with just the Nib token. And I proceeded to make a second full board anyway and beat him. Uh, it was pretty gross. And then game three... Uh, he de-shifted me, and I still just made, like, the bunny, and he couldn't do anything about uh, bunny and Azarin through his own de-shifter. So that's the deck. I don't really know if I would call it a Crystal Beast deck, but it does have more Crystal Beast cards than any other engine. Uh, I don't think I would call it, like, Crystal Beast Snake Eye. There's, like, one of every Snake Eye card in the pile. But, uh, like, the only reason you wouldn't call it Millennium is that they haven't printed enough Millennium cards to do that. Uh... It's like Crystal Beast, Snake Eye, Millennium, Valance, Nemesis, really. It's just Protos Turbo is ultimately what it is. Um, because the Crystal Beasts give you the different attributes in the two level fours required to get to this the same way Ritual Beasts do. But uh, the big play, like the biggest thing in the deck is that if you use Foolish Burial Goods on this and banish it, you can search for this card and Wedju Temple, and then Wedju Temple lets you place this into your back row to get to this guy and two other bodies, and then this banishes itself to give you a third body, and that gets you all the way, most of the way anyway, to Sarah Yuja without using your normal summon, and uh, a banished card. And that's the big thing, is that uh, to use Nemesis Flag for free, you have to also have a banished card, so this is part of that process as well. The Crystal Beast engine just provides you with everything to turbo into Protos. And the rest is just kind of all the best generic extenders in the game. So the deck is really fun. Uh, lots and lots of freestyling in it. You just kind of play what you're dealt until uh, you run out of steam or ideas or zones, whichever comes first. Um, Seriuja as well. The 300 attack boosts are pretty cool. The ability to leave your guys in attack mode means that you get like those 3300 Flame Burge, 3100 Caesar, 1800 uh, Silahat Rabbit under the Sarayuja is pretty cool. And you're frequently ending on somewhere between six and eight interrupts. And it's a lot of just trying not to go into time, obviously. You've got a lot of searching and your opponents have to read all of your cards, so you do have to be mindful of that. But it's... Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's the most fun deck I've played in a really long time. So uh, shout out to all of my opponents for being cool and patient with my like 12 minute turns as I sat there searching for the one copy of Topaz Tiger in the deck and then the one copy of Rainbow Dragon and the one copy of Poplar, the one copy of Ash, the one copy of Flame Like With a stack this big, it takes forever to find everything, including when you're going to side deck, because uh, the side decks, a lot of like when you're going second, you take out those two Valance cards because you're not trying to stop evenly your Lightning Storm anymore anyway. And um, putting in like a Droll and Lockbird and an Ibaru or something for them. And you've got to find them in the pile while you're trying to side deck is quite a bit. It took me over two minutes to side deck every single time. Uh, I'm not going to show what my side deck was because it doesn't matter. And I feel like deck profiles showing side decks mean that people net deck you, build the same side deck, take it to a completely different environment. We just had a regional on Sunday. I knew that Josh was playing Tenpai. I knew that Patrick was playing Memento. I knew that Brad was going to play Snake Eye. Like, I, I had a pretty firm grasp of what my local area was going to be on. It has been three days, and they all just topped a regional. They're not going to switch, uh, at least not realistically. And anyone playing anything else 
like ice barrier just doesn't matter those rounds are always buys anyway so it, it's my locals different than yours my regionals are different than yours don't build my side deck because you don't have the same expected matchups that i do um i, I side decked like crossouts and a droll probably everyone should do that because like i mean it's uh every single uh Droll and Lockbird is bad for you, so like you you can just like put like these in, I suppose. But your other ten cards should be your own. Um, and from there, it's a lot of like when you're going first, the crossouts go in over the Dark Ruler No Mores and stuff. I, I, I guess I'm I'm not gonna side deck for you. You should learn what your local area is doing and adapt to it. So thank you for watching this. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just ask me on Discord, either in my classroom server or the org server or the Yugipedia server. I'm in all three of them pretty frequently. Uh, thank you to Alex for this beautiful playmat. He was the live stream lead, and he also provided me with this mat that we'll be using in all the future videos. But I played with this one today, so I wanted to include it in the deck profile. And thank you guys so much. I will see you next time.